Benvenuto. Welcome to Cherry Hill Home Cooking. My name is Mark. Today we're going to make one of my childhood favorites. My mother called it hot dog stew. Her grandmother made this for her back in the 1940s um, during the Depression uh, when there, of course, wasn't a lot of uh, money around to buy lots of uh, expensive food. Of course, my great uh, grandmother on my mother's side was from Ireland, so of course it would have potatoes in it. So what we're going to need for today's recipe is a uh, package of um, hot dogs. Uh, those are uh, beef hot dogs, whatever your favorite uh, hot dog is. Uh, we need uh, some um, potatoes. Uh, these are Yukon uh, yellow potatoes. For this, you want to use a boiling potato. Uh, so a yellow potato, maybe red potato, uh, opposed to like a russet potato or a baking potato because, uh, of course, they would fall apart in your stew. Um, we're going to need uh, some salt and pepper, of course. Uh, a clover to a garlic, um, one large onion, um, we're going to need a can of um, stewed tomatoes or whole uh, cooked tomatoes, also um, just some tomato sauce. You want to get a tomato sauce that isn't flavored or not necessarily an Italian tomato sauce. I'm also going to use um, some green beans um, and we need some vegetable stock and I'm going to show you what I do with the green beans in a minute. Um, again. This recipe is really inexpensive, it was a, one of my childhood favorites, um, what kids don't like hot dogs, um, and uh, you, know, you can use five pounds of potatoes and really stretch this a long way. Before we go to cooking, I want to show you what I do with um, green beans. Anytime I use canned green beans, um, I drain them well, rinse them out, um, and then I cover them with some vegetable stock and this vegetable stock is also going to go into our stew anyway though so just cover them um, and then we're going to put it on the stove on low until we need it what that does is it it takes away that tinniness of um, canned green beans um, you could, of course you could use fresh but the whole idea behind this dish is it's a really quick um, goes together in almost one pot all right let's get cooking Okay, so um, we're just going to chop, uh, rough chop our potato into, you know, bite-sized pieces or however you prefer, big or small. Gotta just do the same with the onion. Oops. You could use any kind of onion you like. My mother always used white onions for this, so that's what I use when I make this. And again, I'm just going to give this a rough chop. those are strong onions and then we're gonna finely mince our garlic or chop it up as much as possible Okay, all right, we're gonna take everything over to the stove and uh, we'll get everything in the pot. Oh, got the hot 
dogs. Um, just to show, I, uh, you know, again, you can chop them as uh, big as small as you want. The more you want to stretch it, um, chop them bigger. My goal tonight isn't really to stretch this to feed an army, so I'll probably cut them like that. All right, now we'll see you back over at the stove when we're ready to put everything in the pot. Okay, um, we've got our warm pan. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, canola oil to get our onions sauteing in. I'm going to save my uh, garlic for a little bit before I put that in there. Hot pan. So we're just going to let these um, saute a little bit. Let's get a little translucent, a little bit soft. Get um, a little bit of caramelization on there. probably going to take two or three minutes. Already starting to get a little bit of color. That looks good. I have my salt and pepper. Give it a whirl. And I want to get a little bit of color on the hot dogs. So I'm going to throw those in at this point. And we're just going to let those saute for a few minutes. I'm going to stand right here, so I'm going to turn on my heat a little bit. I said this is one of my favorite things as a kid growing up. My mother would make this every once in a while, um, especially my older brothers uh, had their friends over. My house growing up was all all the kids loved my mom. Everyone was always at my house, so she was always feeding an army of teenage boys. Sometimes you just have to be patient. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to get my garlic in there. Give that a stir, give it a chance to cook a bit.
Mm. I always love that smell of garlic when it gets in the pan and comes up to heat. Mm. Okay, at this point I'm going to go back to medium. And I'm going to push my push the push them off to the side a little bit, just because I'm going to add my whole tomatoes. And I like to give them a little mash. You don't have to, but just to break them up a little bit. I suppose you could use crushed tomatoes. And then you wouldn't have to give them a mash. As I said, that's just the way my mother did it, so that's why I do it this way. All right, and then we've got our tomato sauce. vegetable stock in there and get it all out. Oop, lost my cover. I'll be right back. Oops, I'm going to give that a stir. Add our green beans and uh, that have been just slowly warming with the vegetable stock. And then we're going to add our potatoes. Now, of course, I, when you saw these potatoes earlier, they were in water. I've drained the water. Give it a stir. I think I need a little bit more liquid, so I think I'll put in the rest of this vegetable stock. And we want to bring this to a boil. I'm going to turn it up high. I'm going to bring that to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, we're basically just going to cover it and turn it down to a medium low and uh, let it cook until the potatoes are tender. All right, when it boils, I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. Okay, and I forgot to tell you about uh, two other ingredients. Um, I'm going to put an uh, eighth of a teaspoon of uh, accent in here and as well as an eighth of a teaspoon of celery seeds. Again, that's something my mother always added. Um, you definitely want to start out with just an eighth of, eighth of a teaspoon of the celery seeds. They are very flavorful. If you find you, um, when you adjust the taste at the, the end of cooking, you might want to add a little bit more, but just like salt and pepper, you, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. All right, so we're going to give it a stir. And I'm going to turn the heat to low, cover it loosely, and, you know, it's probably going to take, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour for the potatoes to get um, uh, tender. Um, of course, you might want to check on it every 10 minutes or so um, to make sure it's not uh, burning or your water isn't, uh, your liquid isn't evaporating if you need to add even more. But... Um, all right, we'll see you when it's done.